history has been made in Canadian basketball. One hand down! All over the defense! A one hand cock back. Oh! Bringing the fans to their feet, putting a man in the rim. Ain't that awesome? Welcome to the NPA on NPH. Good morning and welcome back to Crestwood Preparatory on the board. Joined alongside Elias Sabate, our national scout in North Pole Loops. I am Daniele Franceschi. Elias, the first couple days we've been treated to some excellent basketball here, some high level competition, some marquee matchups, and here we open up day three with a good matchup between a Quebec side in St. Laurent and RNS down from the Maritimes. A good matchup to open up day three. And RNS has really turned it up this season. I think, you know, the addition of Kellen Tynes has really added another element to their playmaking off the dribble. You know, you have a trusted primary ball handler. Uh, you know, it, it changes things up. It puts a lot more trust. It opens things up for, for Lyon McLean to put up shots. It opens up things up for Shaheen Malcolm to create off the dribble. So what we've been seeing from RNS is steady, steady growth. And the, the only way is up for these guys. Yesterday, delivering a, a good performance. Even on day one, you could see that they were, they were performing at a high level, competing. Shaheen Malcolm, Kellen Tynes, two fantastic playmakers in the backcourt as Ben Datro buries from deep. I had high expectations for Ben Datro and I, I, I want to see him capitalize on his potential. You know, two years ago I saw him at the St. Laurent Express Tournament, one of the best tournaments in Montreal, bar none. And he shocked me, man. I was in awe. Just the level of play, above the rim finishing, three-point making, breakdown game. He had the whole package to him. And in the NPA, he's been kind of, I don't know, looking. Defining his footing. Yeah. Trying to get into a rhythm. Basically. Yeah, you could, you you know, could say that. You could say it's that. It's been an adjustment period, it seems. As Tynes, the floater, middle of the lane is good. And he's been he's been dynamite for this RNS squad. He and Shaheem Malcolm bringing the energy and kind of driving this ship shot on its way, no good off the iron, and it's Keo battling, and he gets the offensive rebound, Datro with it. The shot clock needs to be reset, and St. Laurent will inbound along the sideline. Our first of five games on the schedule today Jason Tom will be joining us later on in RNS. Why, I'm not good enough, Daniele? What's going on here? <laughs> Kick to the corner, Keo. Good move, driving baseline. Strip gets it back out to Datro. Shot is short, getting deep into the shot clock. And here's Kellen Tynes with the dribbling across the timeline. Screen set. Tynes thought about pulling up, gets it down to Malcolm. Lot of contact, finishes. Strong with the right hand. Elias Shaheen Malcolm, six foot five, long, has length for days, is athletic. What do you need to see from him in order to, to have him, what does he kind of, how does he mature and grow as a player going forward? I think most obvious, it's it's the body. It's continuing to develop muscle, and I think that's going to come nat very naturally. I think he, he might still be growing in height, you know, considering his lanky frame. He, he can pretty much play the drums on his knees standing up, <laughs> standing straight. So, I mean, you're going to start to see his body, first of all, develop, and then um, ball handling so that he can play a little bit of a combo role in college. I think that brings up his overall stock when he does that. When you look at his college potential and his stock, it certainly seems to be rising. And Jason and I spoke extensively over the past couple of days. It's hard to project and forecast kind of what you're going to see. And our guy's going to end up filling out into their body type. And But when you look at a guy like Shaheem Malcolm, where, where does he project in terms of his his college potential. So most of the conversations that I've had with college coaches have been at either the high U sport level or the mid-major NCAA level. So the A10, mm -hmm. you know, m multiple programs from the A10 have have inquired about him. And I think that if he ends up at that level, he would be exactly where he needs to be. 
Um, I'm not doubting that he could, you know, he could play any higher, but there are still kinks in his game that need to be developed. And once he gets through that, I think, you know, the, the mid-major level is ideal for him. Rebound corralled by Kellen Tynes, pushing it up the floor into traffic and out of bounds. A little aggressive there and going into two, three defenders. Not exactly a high percentage look, although he, that's, a, that's a key element of his game, attacking off the dribble, creating for himself and his teammates as here's Ben Datro comes it down inside along the high post. Datro cutting. Oh, a zone look from RNS. Shot is off the mark. It's Malcolm battling with Datro and St. Laurent. It's off of blue and we're seeing a little more fight from Datro today, which I which I like. He usually plays with poise, so you won't you can't really tell when he's getting hype and when he's not. He's a he's a pretty even keel type of player, but just the overall energy level, the positioning, the you know, boxing out for rebounds, starting to see some more life. Tynes over to Malcolm. That was Richie McNeil. Back to Shaheen Malcolm, three on its way, no good. Rebound, corralled. Now pushing it up the floor. One guy we don't get a lot of uh, opportunities to talk about. You know, he doesn't stick out out in any way particularly. But Dawson Sutherland, I think, fills a role for RNS that is very much needed. He's not the biggest physically. I mean, in terms of height for this team, he does stand at six six, and they do have uh, six nine on this team in Ben Dowell, but. He fills his role. He knows what's expected of him. And role definition is key when you're trying to win games. Keel with it. Kicks it back out. Attacking off the dribble. Gets it back out to Keo. Keo over to Datro. Ten on the shot clock. Down inside. Keo. Oh, that's a tough match <laughs> underneath when you have Shaheem Malcolm and his length. And as you pointed out, that lanky frame, you see it on full display defensively there. And number 50 for St. Laurent in the blue, Arno Ngamji, 2021-6-8. Would love to see him be more assertive when he catches in that high post. You know, the turn in, when he turns and faces, he's got the ability to, to knock down that, that pull up from mid-range. Um, he's just got to look for himself a little more. You know, maybe being a graduating class of 2021, he, he's a little timid at times. You know, he doesn't want to he wants to kind of appease the seniors on the squad, but he's got to look for himself a little bit more. And it, it'll, it'll help in the overall success of the team as well, not to be you know, selfish for the player or anything. Malcolm fouled, and he's going to earn a trip to the stripe. We haven't seen Trayvon Minot yet. He's the other big on this team, and Gamgee, the 2021 prospect, he's standing at six foot eight and Another guy, as a 10th grader, you take a look at his body and you see that he's going to fill out and continue to grow. Malcolm, free throw, no good. Gets his own rebound. Shaheen Malcolm, shots off the mark. Better shot selection on that one. I mean, good steal, Kellen Tynes. Oh, nifty pass. You got to expect that. You've been playing with him. You've been playing with Tynes for how long now? You, you got to expect that that's coming. And able to corral it and finish was Shaheen Malcolm. And they play with this half-court trapping system. And it's a disruptive, it disrupts the flow. Kind of ruin the, the tempo. And RNS has uh, proven to be very successful. First free throw on its way. It's good. So an and one opportunity converted. To the corner now, shot as butter. That is Richie McNeil dialed in from deep. And here's RNS. When you put Shaheem Malcolm at the front of your press, you might generate a lot of turnovers. He got that length, he got that length, and he's got good anticipation in the passing lanes. Great delivery underneath and the finish. It's Basil, he's on the board. Now with St. Laurent, we've seen them disguised as two different teams. I've seen them being able to break the press pretty efficiently and smoothly, and then I've seen them struggle against some of the longer and bigger teams. You know, coming into this next, they have a mini session going on in Montreal, which St. Laurent is hosting. So that's gonna allow the East to play a lot of games. So RNS will be coming, Ottawa, 
as well as Saint Laurent. So in that session, that is gonna set them up number one to finish off their regular season games, but more so to prepare for nationals. I think we'll see an entirely different team by that level. And off of that miss, Gamji, you want to see him hustle back hard. You know, he kind of felt bad for himself on that play, but just want to see him go hard and finish. Can't hang your head defensively. Here's Tynes with it. Breaks down down the sideline, into the lane. Kellen Tynes, and he's fouled. Gamji. Terrific change of speed and direction right around midcourt. That's exactly when you want to pull that off. Defenders are kind of questioning, okay, is he going to take me all the way? Is he going to stop stop and make a pass? And Very good selection there. Using both hands, going right to left, and then attacking and making a strong move to the bucket. Tynes at the line. First free throw, good. He gets the shooter's roll on that one. And Tynes is another 2020 prospect, Daniele. We are looking at a floor full of 2020s and 2021s. This is the future of the NPA. This is the future of Canadian basketball right here before us. Battling for the rebound underneath, and it's Malcolm who emerges with the basketball. There's Line McLean. Jumper is short. Gets it back. Kicks it out. It's Malcolm. Baseline drive. Rejected by Minot. Jackie Wu. Again, the shot clock reset. And Minot, number 22 in the blue for St. Laurent, stands at 6'9", an ultra-skilled big man, pretty much just scratching the surface and what he's going to be able to provide another 2020 prospect already at 6'9", out of Montreal, Quebec. A lot of room for growth with a lot of these young players and a shot clock violation. Lack of awareness there from the RNS squad and Kellen Tynes didn't realize that he was getting deep into the shot clock. So you have Shaheem Malcolm at the top of this press, and it's Tynes and McLean operating along the wings. Down low, you have Jackie Wu protecting the hoop for the moment. It's Minot. Good Working face up Wu. there. He should be able to take him on that one. Uh, you want to see him go strong to the basket. Yeah. And in this situation right now, you have one thing, we, one, thing one positive that we could take from that play in particular. As a team, St. Laurent using the middle of the floor to kind of suck in the defense and, and break the zone. Second, you saw Minal use his pivot mm -hmm. to turn and face to the rim. Now, the next step, I think, in the half-court set for St. Laurent is being able to execute with Minal down in the low post. If he establishes position low enough, he should have it, be able to have his way with the squad. You do like to see, especially from a big guy, the awareness and recognition to know, okay, there's gonna be some extra attention being placed upon me as having a significant size advantage. He kicks it to the corner and it, and it does result in a opportunity to get some points on the board for his team. And here's Tynes with it. Gets it over to Malcolm. We're gonna be hearing a lot about these two today. Malcolm underneath to Jackie Wu. And he's fouled. Jackie Wu, a young man who we saw yesterday coming to the ball game, he drew about two or three charges. He provides the energy. He's one of those glue guys for RNS. The hats off to Coach Damian Gay. I think he's done a tremendous job over the, these last two years, holistically, from a recruiting standpoint, from a culture building standpoint, just to get these guys to buy into role definition, to buy into the culture of, of you know playing with a chip on your shoulder, playing tough, you know, playing to the last minute, the last second of every game. You know, considering a winless season last year coming in this year and they just got a different swagger about them. I think Kellen Tynes is a big part of that, you know, bringing in, bringing in a lot of confidence. I think McLean this year, having played, having had a season under his belt, also playing with a lot more confidence, being able to shoot it a little better even. Ben Datro gets the roll. We got a two point game here with a couple minutes remaining in the first quarter of the line. McLean shot is short. Good looking shot, just not enough legs underneath. And here comes St. Laurent, the express, across the timeline, making a move into the lane. Wild shot, but he's fouled. Bailout there. Gideon Dwan for. He's gonna go to the free throw line. Been very active in the early going here for the express. It's encouraging to see Ben Datcher being a little more assertive in this one, and that was perhaps the knock on him the past couple days, just not kind of picking his spots. 
Yeah, the expectation on him was was you know was high coming in from a scouting and evaluating standpoint, and I'd like him to hold himself with that high expectation as well. First free throw was off the mark, and now the second also rims in and out, and here comes Shaheen Malcolm. Toronto native, a bit of a homecoming for Malcolm. Playing here at Crestwood. Tynes picks up his dribble, and McLean can't handle the pass. It's out of bounds. It'll be Ben Datro operating for St. Laurent. 2-3 zone. RNS has been very effective with the zone defense. We saw them give Central Tech a bit of a scare yesterday, and a lot of that can be attributed to the defense they played in the first half. As the basket is good, and here comes Kellen Tynes back up the floor. Screen set by Wu, rolling to the bucket. Here's Malcolm for three. Off the back iron and out, long rebound, secured by Datro. One thing I'm noticing about Kellen Tynes more and more through each game is that he plays at different levels. And what I mean by that is, you know, he, he starts in a low athletic stance with his dribble, which, you know, allows for a more explosive attack. But then he'll give you a hezzy and he'll kind of move up his body with his dribble, you know, changing levels all the way through. So the stance, you know, really has defenders on their toes. We saw him handle some <laughs> significant pressure yesterday defensively that was being applied by Central Tech. And deploying a full court press, especially down the stretch in that second half when they began to pull away. However, Kellentine's very poised and the demeanor was so calm and collected as he, he's going to take a breather. And right now you got Maynot on the last possession. They are really trying to establish position low post against Jackie Wu. And I think the guards just got to do a better job for St. Laurent of seeing him establish position. He's the only 6'9 guy on the floor. Feed him, just like the same way they were doing with Casey Izagu at GTA Prep. Once the big man feels involved in the game, and he doesn't necessarily have to look to score. He just needs touches. He needs touches so that he'll, he'll work that much harder for you. We saw it last night as well. And speaking of a big guy having a big game, Josh and Kumsa. Yep. He was lights out last night for LBA and a big win for them over Toronto Basketball Academy. And to your point, Elias, you just want to make your big guys feel involved. Keep them engaged. And here comes Datro with it. Certainly an opportunity to get Minot some touches. Three on its way. It's good. A big triple. That is Roosevelt August burying from deep, and it's a four-point game. Less than 20 seconds remaining here in the opening quarter. And August knew the whole time that he wanted that shot. He was yelling at Ben the whole way up the court. Hey, 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 see me, see me. And Malcolm unable. Here's another one from August. The, oh, there it is. Buries the triple from the corner. The sharpshooter pulling out the arrow. And that's going to do it for the first quarter. RNS trailing, and it's St. Laurent, the Express out in front, 24-17. We're going to take a quick break. And we'll be back with more action here at Crestwood. We've traveled across the country and back. Six years running. Canada's basketball talent blossoms right before our eyes from coast to coast. It's our job to bring it to the light. No gimmicks, just hard work on the hardwood. Who will step up to the plate this summer? Who will make their game undeniable and challenge every man in front of him? Game will speak. NPH Events. There's an opportunity to get involved at the ground level. NPH hosts elite level high school tournaments to national club team championships throughout the course of the season. Now is your chance to get involved with the fastest growing sport in Canada with the industry leaders and influencers. Get in the game today and join NPH in growing basketball in this country.
NPH Scouting Service. The NPH Scouting Service is another class. Shaheem Malcolm, the straw, the straw that stirs the drink for RNS. Elias, a, a young man, and we've been talking and heaping praise. When you look at his game, what are some of his best attributes and what do you hope to see from him in terms of his growth going forward? Well, what I love about him is that he's all around. You know, he's gonna give, he's gonna fill it up across the board on the stat sheet, different categories. He keeps his hands in the passing lanes. He's a good defender, he's got great length, which he uses effectively, and he rebounds and scores in every which way. That time got caught in a foul unnecessarily, but overall, I mean, you just like how packaged he is and that the fact that he's not one-dimensional. Do you think there's some, maybe some pressure or, or a need for him to take on more of a vocal role as a leader? Absolutely, but I don't think that it, that's innately what he is. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that is a part of his personality, and personality makes up a lot of what the prospect is as a, as a, as a teammate. And I think that role actually belongs to Kellen Tynes on this team. But, I mean, shoot. August. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Coming out on fire. Three for three from deep. That's nine points for St. Laurent's sharpshooter. And normally heats up in August, but... He's bringing it into the winter. <laughs> well, it's minus 20 outside. We need some warm weather. Tines into the lane, short on his shot attempt. To your point, Elias, yes, it is. Kellentine's more of the vocal presence on the floor for this RNS team, although Shaheem Malcolm, I think you're seeing him kind of come out of his shell a little bit and be a little more vocal. And he needs to. He needs to. You know, it's it's that's a non-negotiable. Try to embrace a bit of a leadership role in terms of his ability to communicate on the floor. Oh, in August, that's his fourth three of the game. My goodness, sizzling from downtown. Screen set. Malcolm coming over. It's a 13-point express lead. McNeil to Tynes. Tynes on the dribble. Shying away some, from some contact there. Could have drawn a foul, it looked like. And now coming up the floor of the Express. And August has single-handedly built this lead here for St. Laurent, giving him a little bit of a cushion. 30 to 17 now here in the second quarter. It's an abbreviated 12-0 run from August himself. <laughs> Damian Gay getting into his guys, and here comes the first time out of the ball game. We'll take a short break. The Express, they've established a double-digit cushion. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Rep by rep, you push yourself. Effort is only half the battle. Doubt sets in. Why do you do it? Is it worth it? The lights turn on. All your questions are answered. Everyone has their story. What's yours? Were you born with the ball in your hands? Or were you a late bloomer? Are you a dead-eye shooter? Or a high flyer? Throws up an alley -oop. All ammo! Williams! Are you a leader? Or an elite role player? Welcome back inside Crestwood Preparatory College here in North York, Ontario. Day three of the NPA New Year Challenge. Count it plus the foul. Shaheem Malcolm trying to put a dent into this deficit for RNS. He's going to have an opportunity to cut it down to 10 with a free throw here. And it's been the Roosevelt August show for St. Laurent. The Express paced offensively by the 6-2 shooting guard. 12 points early on. He's 
taking a breather. But he's been, he caught fire, checked into the ball game and has been unconscious from deep. Attacking into the lane, slicing, no, some contact and look at the big fella underneath. Good follow up there. Way, way to read the play and just keep track of the ball coming off the rim. McNeil pivoting, rebound, offensive board and put back. It's good. You look at Shaheem Malcolm, his numbers this season, fantastic for RNS. Second in the NPA in scoring, averaging 23 a game, better than seven and a half rebounds per game, and hovering around four dimes as well. And All he's, around. Sitting, he's sitting with some good company, Daniele. Ja'Shawn Henry, the leading scorer in the entire league, plays for Notre Dame out of Saskatchewan. 28 points a game to go with just over seven rebounds and two assists. This is a kid who has, you know, recently picked up more interest from New Mexico. Coach Paul Weir, the head coach there, a Canadian, by the way, one of the only NCAA head coaches uh, that, that is Canadian. And, you know, they're doing a, tr a tremendous job, you know, rebuilding in New Mexico and just, you know, continuing to pace. And Jerome Robinson, who was formerly at St. Bonaventure, had originally offered Ja'Shawn Henry while he was there. Now when he got the job at New Mexico, he said, Coach Weir, we gotta get on this guy. So, they, they, you know, Coach Weir's yet to see him in person, um, but a lot of schools now digging into Ja'Shawn Henry. So for Shaheen Malcolm to be around that type of company, Okai Jamgos, mm -hmm. a youngster, you know, follows up with 22 and a half points a game of his own. Branko Damjonovic from St. John's Kilmarnock at 21. Very well balanced for Damjonovic as well. 21.8, 5.4 assists, 4.8 rebounds. And one name on that list that might be a little foreign to some people, but Ryan Tony from Halifax Prep, averaging nearly 20 points per contest. The, the lone senior on that Halifax Prep squad. And congratulations to Marcus Eaton and his team picking up their first win in program history yesterday. That's got to feel steal. good. Oh, absolutely. And they were celebrating, and deservedly so. Here's Datro slicing into the lane. Great finish, Ben Datro. And you know that that win yesterday for Halifax Prep is also going to give him a ton of confidence moving forward. Just to note, like they've got one, they've got one. Why not be able to get more? You know, the schedule for the next little while does. Yeah, it's it's going to be challenging the whole way through. But I mean, just to to have that confidence, knowing that you got one under your belt, makes a, a world of a difference. We we'll see a foul picked up there and some subs coming for St. Laurent. Back into the game is Roosevelt August. The hot hand for sure. And here's Tynes with it. Hands it right back off to Shaheem Malcolm. Malcolm, a handoff to McNeil. Gets it over to Tynes. Tynes off the screen. Good rotation. Good kick. And it's McNeil. Straight on, burying the triple. And it's back to single digits. Here comes the Express. Dribble handoff. Into the lane. Good move, strong move. Offensive rebound and the putback, Trayvon Minot. Too big down there, Elias. Just too big. That's a handful to deal with. Man, he's going to be the future of this league. I could see him in, you know, in one year's time coming back and just really changing the face of the entire league. Datro. A little bit of shake and bake, and he heads it off now and attacking in a block. Kellen Tynes getting in there and making a play defensively. Tynes now changing speeds. Great pass underneath. Malcolm, he can't draw the foul. <laughs> <laughs> he saw me, he saw me not there a little too late. Oh, look at that rebound. Snatching it off the rim. Shaheem Malcolm transition. Kicking it to McLean. To Tynes. Tynes on the dribble. Attacking. Rejected by Minot down underneath and it's Malcolm putting it back up and in. Great awareness by Tynes to recover, see the rebound and know that his guys are still under the rim. Ben Datro, very active in this first half for St. Laurent. Guarded by Malcolm, turns the corner, attacking, a little bit of contact, regains possession, now kicks it back out. Roosevelt August, why not? Oh, it's off the mark this time around. Shot selection there, just, you know, he, he took that based off of the fact that he had made four, but the defender closed out pretty quickly on that one. Could have pumped faked or sidestepped him. 
A good closeout. He outlets the ball this time to Datro and a foul. They have a couple subs coming in. It's going to be Keo checking in for St. Laurent as August will take a seat. Lion McLean. We talk about this being a two pronged attack with Malcolm and Tynes. They're looking for guys like Caleb Suley, who we haven't seen touch the floor yet today, but Lion McLean, amongst others, to, to really step up and provide them with some complimentary options offensively. And the Express will inbound from along the baseline. 4.17 to go in this first half. Keo, corner, attacking underneath. Minot, fighting for it underneath. A battle. And it's St. Laurent emerging with possession. They dump it down inside. Again, Minot, drop step. Can't get it to go middle of the lane. And you Malcolm can see, sorry to cut you off there, Daniela, you can see glimpses of his skill set and what he can become. You know, a big part of it is continuing to shed the baby fat and trim up a little bit, getting in better shape. But what he will become is a high major level center. And, you know, he's even got some ball handling ability to him that a lot of players haven't seen yet. And a timeout on the floor. We'll take a quick break when we come back. Final 3-4-52 of the first half. St. Laurent and RNS. Angos will shoot another three. His third triple already. I'm a retired teacher. I coached at a whole bunch of different levels throughout the player delivery system in Canada. Involved myself at the provincial level uh, with, as head coach of Team Ontario from 1994 to 97. Coached at the university level, University of Guelph for seven years. High school coach. And I'm now an author. And uh, I'm an author of a book called Can't Miss, a story about Kevin Pangos. But the thing, the angle that I'm bringing about the book is that I'm a basketball coach who wrote a book. So I'm del the delivery of the book en encapsulates everything that Can Canada basketball is all about. Pangos will shoot another three, his third triple. Yet again, a 10 point advantage restored for Team Blue. Oh! That's Judy Charges throwing it down! Welcome to the NPH live broadcasting experience. Allow our team of video technicians to capture your event in high definition. And welcome back inside Crestwood Preparatory College. St. Laurent, RNS locked in a good one. A nine point game, 340 remaining in this opening half. St. Laurent, a steal. Here comes Lyon McLean for the RNS. Kicks it out to Richie McNeil. McNeil pivots, finds Kellen Tynes. Screen set, Tynes using that screen. Gets it over to McLean. McNeil, excuse me, and he buries the triple. If he's open, he's knocking it down. Doesn't need a lot of time to set up either. And now McNeil playing tight defense, and it's Dashrow with it. Guarded by Malcolm at 6'5 frame and the wingspan and with Ben Dastro and he's stripped of the basketball by Tynes. Oh, look at the speed and explosiveness. Kellen Tynes doesn't get the roll, but he will get the foul. A late, delayed foul call, but you see the explosiveness. And we, we've been talking about his ability to change speeds in the open floor and Kellen Tynes. And good job by the, by the trail referee there. You know, noticing the foul, it came a, a second too late, but the baseline ref there, you know, different angle, missed it. Good teamwork on that recovery. Tynes will shoot a pair. Oh, and Tynes is going to have to temporarily check out of this ball game, and he appears to have some blood on his uniform or and now a conversation between the official and coach Damian Gay one guy who's really stepped up for RNS here in this first half Richie McNeil and when he's had the open looks he's converted he's been able to connect on numerous occasions from beyond the arc and you see him stepping up and providing them with a little bit of a lift offensively So 
So Jack Fifield checks in for Kellen Tynes and he converts the first and two for two from the line. Fresh off the bench. Attacking his Datro, gets it underneath. Minot! Oh my god. You goodness. see what I'm talking about? You see the potential? <laughs> Trayvon Minot, just with ease. Wow, effortless. A steal, and here comes St. Laurent, the Express off and running. Minot, oh, and a big time rejection from Shaheem Malcolm. And now in transition, Malcolm can't get it to go. Offensive rebound, and rims out, battling underneath, and the foul. Ben Dowell, he'll go to the free throw line. Oh, what a sequence. First we see Trayvon Minot nearly creating a poster. And then Malcolm with an emphatic rejection on the defensive end. Ben Dowell at the free throw line. 6-9 from Middleton, Nova Scotia. Class of 2019, misses the first free throw. Second on its way, it's good. Here's Keo. Handoff coming, no delayed. Pivoting nearly travel and Tynes with the steal. Picks the pocket, running the lane, and finishing with the right hand off glass. And again, we're seeing from Jam J here in this first half, we're seeing him make mistakes, but then not attempt to make up for them. He's not getting back in time after the initial mistake is made. If you turn the ball over, you gotta be the first guy back in. There's no time to feel sorry for yourself on the play. And an offensive foul. A couple of teams here in RNS and St. Laurent that winless on the week thus far. So this is a game that certainly has significant meaning for both of these teams. Malcolm with it. Gets it again on the wing. Attacking, strong move and a traveling violation and a good call by the official. And some great defense there from Stefan Bassel. A timeout. We'll take a, a quick breather here. And when we come back, 150 remaining. A three point game, RNS and St. Laurent. We've traveled across the country and back. Six years running. Canada's basketball talent blossoms right before our eyes. From coast to coast. It's our job to bring it to the light. No gimmicks, just hard work on the hardwood. Who will step up to the plate this summer? Who will make their game undeniable? And challenge every man in front of him. Game will speak. Keep it going. Keep the intensity high. Get your feet square. Get your feet square. Take it home. Write it down. Grab a homie and work on it. Work on it. Master. AJ Lawson, go! He gets it to go. Wow. Pick it up, Caleb. Oh my God. 38-35 in favor of the St. Laurent Express from Montreal, Quebec. And as Ben Datro dribbles up the floor. Thank you for joining us this morning. We have a couple minutes remaining in this opening half and it's been an entertaining one thus far. Down inside, here's Nagampe. Down to four on the shot clock. Into the lane. And a good defensive possession for RNS. A shot clock violation. And way to not bail out the Express on that one. Almost all the RNS defenders there stayed as vertical as possible, trying to avoid the foul. Good fundamental defensive positioning and a good rotation. Fifth field. 
gets down in the corner. Tynes, what a move. Great pass, extra pass. Malcolm, and the finish. Ball movement on point from RNS. Playing a really unselfish brand of basketball this morning. And that's what's going to get them some Ws. These are two teams that are near the bottom of the standings. You know, really every possession counts for them. They're, they're trying to get wins over each other as well. And RNS trailing by as many as 13 in this first half. Now the deficit stands at one and an opportunity to take the lead on this possession. Although, there you see, able to corral possession is St. Laurent. Attacking as Datro kicks it to the corner. Rejected! Roosevelt August. So I, I love the way he started off the game. Roosevelt had 12 points to start off the game going four of four from three, but the last two shots that he's taken, a little bit ill-advised. He can afford to pump fake, read the play better. You gotta be able to read the closeout. Datro, again, deep into the shot clock. Kicks it out, three on its way. Short, rims in and out. Tynes will have it, and they're gonna hold for the final possession as Damian Gay instructing his team. Kellen Tynes gonna operate with some space. Clock winding down, 10 now on the game clock. It's a one point game, Datro guarding. McNeil, they get the switch. Keo, Tynes underneath, good delivery, fifth field, got it! And as the buzzer expires, marking the end of this first half, it's RNS with a one point advantage. Five minutes on the clock, we're gonna take a break. Oh boy, decompress. An entertaining opening half between St. Laurent and RNS. And we'll be back with third quarter action. Beat the buzzer. Stick back, Jam Jacoby Neath. Hey! Let's go, man. Good pick, boy. Transition, Shaheem Malcolm. Oh, someone check that ball for a bruise. Hey! Oh, ah! With the steal. Blowing past everybody, AJ Lawson. Let's go, bro. In transition, throwing it down. Off the backboard, Ja'Shawn Henry. Shaheem Malcolm letting everybody know the Riverhawks have taken fire. the Filipino wrecking machine and if you want to put together a Matthew Dave's highlight reel oh look out your boy Elijah Fisher two-handed slam two out of Calgary ooh no luck pass big time finish Cole Newkirk oh so if you turn it over like that it doesn't matter number 21 Nas Robert Ewer definitely put things into perspective for him. You want to talk about perspective? My assist, give me that assist. Oh, come on. Bang out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got one. Tushan Henry is a man. Raheem Sullivan has the ball in his hand. Two 
on the clock, gets into the lane. Floater game! Floater game! Floater game! Raheem Sullivan with the floater game! In this game... Penn goes from straight away. Hit another three. His sixth of the first half. I think the biggest thing about Kevin, highly skilled, but his values are very, very solid. Homeschooled value sort of thing. Of uh, his, his grandparents taught him a lot. His uncle taught him a lot. Bill and Patty, his parents, obviously played a huge role. And he's very, very value-based. Everybody that you talk to that played with Kevin or coached Kevin will tell you exactly the same thing. Just a great kid, very, very grounded, never got full Every of himself. Back out to Pengos, got it again. Pengos is knocking out all these open threes. Kevin and I have a relationship that was formulated when I was one of the coaches at Camp Olympia that he could talk to and he could relate to and he'd, we'd do workouts together, whatever it might be. And then it evolved into the admiration of he knew that I knew where he wanted to go. But I was one of those coaches that we're at another level that Kevin was after and he could get information from me. He's 17 years old when I first proposed this to him and his parents. A 17 year old kid, I want to write a book about you because I want to follow you for the next four years. It turns out to be Gonzaga. And um, so and then from there, he and I Skyped, you know, lots of times throughout his four years and we became very, very close. And it's very, very special relationship now that I, I'm- Top 10, top 10. Two way players are the best players. Understand that. Two way players are the best players. Here's Sabri Phillip. Two way jam. Let's go, boy. It doesn't matter from what city you're from, how tall you are, what school, what club you represent. The game speaks. There's no politics here. History has been made in Canadian basketball. From the Maritimes to the nation's capital. I just like the sound. Brady Kanku, my goodness. To the six. Oh, big block there. To the prairies. By Deshaun Henry. All the way. Second half action. About to get underway. It'll be St. Laurent. You see Andrew Keogh in front of your screen. Number 11 in blue. And he inbounds to Ben Datro. Datro with it. Day three of the NPA New Year Challenge here at Crestwood Preparatory College in North York, Ontario. Five games on the schedule today, followed by three tomorrow. Lyon McLean, no good long. In that first half, it was Shaheen Malcolm leading the way offensively for RNS. 14 points. Ben Datro. The high man for St. Laurent with 10 as he's short on that one. And then Ben Roosevelt August. Excuse me, I cut him short. But 12 points for Roosevelt August on four of six shooting from deep. Datro with 10. Tynes loses that one and out of bounds. It's Keogh inbounding for St. Laurent, what a run. RNS trailing by as many as 13 in that first half. They come back to take a one point lead. Up 39 38 at halftime. That's the score a minute in to this third quarter. And a foul. And heading to the free throw line, the charity stripe is Gideon Dwanfor. And as we were talking about in that first half, Elias and I, you look at a lot of the guys on the floor for both of these teams and you see a lot of class of 2022, or excuse me, 2020, 2021. So guys who still have a few years of eligibility remaining and are poised to continue to grow. A guy like Shaheem Malcolm, a Kellen Tynes, Shot from the corner, McNeil, it's short and deflected out of bounds. And now RNS, we saw them apply some pressure defensively. They, they operate, they like to operate with the zone press and then fall back into a man-to-man -man setting. 
Floater on its way, no good, off the glass, and Tynes with the rebound. Stolen! 1-4. Can't get it to go. Tynes secures possession, dribbles across the timeline. Tynes slicing and dicing, floater alert, no good. Tynes again, underneath Shaheem Malcolm. Can't get it to go, still fighting for it underneath. A battle ensuing, and now coming away with it is Datro. He outlets, successfully the one four. Good move into the lane. Kio attacking, dumping Nagape. Can't get it to go, fighting for it, and a foul underneath. Beauty pass by Keo on that, on that possession. And Elias, we talked about wanting to see the big guy underneath this young 20, 21 prospect. We want to see him be more aggressive. We want to see him get up and down the floor. And if you make a mistake, don't hang your head. Don't pout about it, but try to find a way to get back down the other way and atone for your miscue. And you see he's at the foul line here, missing the first. Well, for a lot of the bigs in, the, in you know in our league, we one thing that I've I've spoke to them off air about and you know away from the away from the court is when you're looking to finish. If you're six eight six nine looking to finish around the rim and you're a foot two feet away from the rim, look to dunk everything, everything. And when you're doing drill work, drill to dunk everything. I'm talking 20, 30 reps in a row where you're literally catching, turning, and dunking. Or catching, drop step, dunking. If you are practicing that stuff, then you will be more likely to do it in the game. Tynes uh, out of control that time and loses the handle. Shaking his head, thought there might have been some contact, but it's a turnover. And one of the big things, you look at one of the premier big man in the NPA and Casey Azagu and GTA Prep and one of the things he's still still trying to perfect and polish. Smart play there by McLean. He knew that it was coming. Doubled him on the baseline. Set position. Got the charge. And that's textbook defensive rotation. You see him. He was in that help spot and ready to stand his ground and take a charge. Get an extra possession for this RNS team and here's Malcolm using the screen. He decides I'm going to pull up and it's long. Something I, you'd like to see him add to his game, a consistent jump shot. Yeah, and you, and you can tell in the form, the form is not consistent at all. Uh, he's got a little glitch in the follow through. The, pi the pinky usually comes in a lot, which turns the rotation on the ball. And it's actually oddly enough, I mean, he's, he's not that bad from the foul stripe. He's able to shoot proficiently from there, just stepping outside of the three point arc. It's been a, it's been a struggle for him. And then if you think about it, if he's able to add a consistent jumper, even just to make opposing teams respected enough that they have to come all the way out and contest and guard you along the perimeter with that length. Yeah, that's <laughs> when he'll be able to use his first step more. Exactly. And then you talk about the explosiveness, and that's where you get the total package for, for a guy like that. And so RNS will inbound along the sideline. And they get it into Tynes. Tynes, pull up jumper, got it. Rattles around and drops for Kellen Tynes. Datro. Dwan four, back to Datro. Screen set, gets it to the corner. Keo, attacking baseline, kicks it on the skip. And a travel. Got to be able to put that first dribble down before the first step is taken. A lot of guys have been getting caught on that. They're getting a little antsy. Maybe seeing a lane open up and wanting to attack it. And there's McLean screen, set, gets it out to McNeil. He's been very active today as Richie McNeil. Here's Malcolm into the lane, kicks it to the corner. McLean, got it! Lion McLean, the heart of a lion, and he connects from the corner. Didn't even think about it. As soon as it got into his hands, he knew it was going up. One four screen. McNeil guarding him, switching it underneath, and a turnover. Malcolm running the sideline, pushing it up the floor. Shaheen Malcolm kicks it, one extra pass, corner triple. Lion McLean, all the way from Nova Scotia. Forty-five forty. RNS. 
in front. And I might have did a bit of a disservice there. It's from New Brunswick. Oh, you'll be, you'll, you'll be hearing about it. You'll be hearing <laughs> about it on the tweets and on the commentary. McLean. A very proud people, and they should be. Absolutely. 100%. And it's great to see the Maritimes, the East Coast basketball, not just with this RNS team, but you look at Halifax prep. Yep. And to see some of the talent, to see the support, yeah, it really is. It really is fantastic. It was quite a scene in in, in Rothsay when they were hosting Halifax, and the entire community came out and really, you know, pushed that game. And hats off to Rothsay Netherwood School as a whole. You know, just having the buy-in to trust that, you know, in the first year last year, that this was the the route to take for their pre basketball program and for their kids. Clay off glass, nifty shot, fading away. Catching it on the inbound and scoring the bucket. One four down inside to Minot. Minot dribble handoff exchange with Datro and a foul. Good call coming down on the way down. It looked like there might have been Kellen Tynes getting their hand in there. So if you're St. Laurent Express right now on the defensive end, you're looking at McLean. He's got the last eight for RNS. Somebody man up on him. <laughs> Common sense, no? You you would think. If somebody's got the hot hand, you want to maybe contest as much as possible and just ensure that he doesn't touch it. Here's Minot. Good strong move. Doesn't get it to go. Shaheen Malcolm. Rebound. Pushing it up the floor. Malcolm kick it to the corner. Oh, Lion McLean. It's long this time. Had hit the previous two. Here's Tynes with it. Battling loose ball. Out of bounds. Oh, and you see Ben Datro displaying a little bit of emotion and frustration. It's going to be RNS basketball. McLean, or excuse me, Tynes on the inbound for Malcolm. Short jumper rolls in and out. Offensive rebound. In the lane, no good. Tynes fighting for it. And certainly a malfun malfunction, excuse me, with the shot clock, and they're going to have to reset it. Sutherland had a wide open scoop there to Malcolm underneath, but I think he's trying to get it, trying to get it grooving for himself a little bit as well. He had a couple opportunities, an open mid range jumper. Those are the ones you want to take. The free throw line area with no defender yeah. in sight. Got his own rebound. Just unable to finish and find the touch. Oh, Shaheen Malcolm with authority. Good morning, he says. <laughs> That's going to wake you up. In the corner. And we're going to have another shot clock reset. A nine point lead for RNS. <laughs> Shaheen Malcolm. Long, athletic, lanky. That's a good timeout called by St. Laurent. All momentum in the direction of RNS. And just a reminder, coming up later on this year, we have the Nationals. We're going to crown our second NPA champion, and we saw the defending champs, CTA, roll into town last night, taking care of business against SJK. That trophy currently residing in Ottawa. But, but what's scary about that is Ottawa's looking better, or Canada top flight's looking better than they did last year. <laughs> you see some of the young talent they have. Oh boy. The length, the athleticism. And what's interesting about those guys, the, the, the way they glide up and down the floor. You're, you got Moon Reith, you got Luel Akat, you got so many different weapons. Yeah, Kaleem Sarazen is one of the deadly tools. That, you know, when, when he gets it going, like when he gets hot, he scores in bunches. And they pick up the win last night in their first game. Looked like they had some dead legs in the first half and then you know, making the trip from Ottawa and playing in the afternoon, later on, early evening. But some of the teams that we've seen here this weekend, Crestwood, Central Tech, We've seen some real heavyweights and some good teams that are going to definitely give CTA a run for their money. And you talk about even 
Notre Dame, the Hounds. Zoomed in on line McLean right now. Been a sharp shooter mm -hmm. in the third quarter here for RNS. Built up this lead 49 40, and different pieces for RNS have stepped up in this game. Again, momentum moving in their direction. And that's been one of the key points of discussion when talking about this RNS team. Where is that third, fourth option going to come from? Where are you going to get that secondary layer of scoring? And now St. Laurent applying some pressure here. Tynes, and he loses it. It's a deflection. Officials indicated it was deflected by Ben Datro. And to answer your question just a second ago, if I'm Coach Dowell, I'm uh, sorry, if I'm Coach Gay, <laughs> I'm looking at Ben Dowell to be that third, fourth option on this squad. There's nobody else on the team that's 6'9 and, you know, can really establish themselves in the paint. Shaheem Malcolm. Once again, slicing in in the lane and finishing with the reverse. And no answer. St. Laurent having a hard time finding someone who can stop Shaheem Malcolm. Rebound and Malcolm again coming down with it. Tynes, you've seen these two on the court the entire game thus far. Lion McLean, New Brunswick, burying the triple and now a double digit advantage for RNS. Datro, pull up jumper, no good from the short corner. Malcolm, across the timeline. Screen set, opts not to use it, gets it down to fifth field. Fifth field, turning, muscling his way. Offensive rebound and a foul. And you mentioned him, Dawson Sutherland. There he is, he's gonna go to the charity stripe. The other big also checking into the game, Ben Dowell, getting set to come in and he's gonna take the spot of Sutherland after these foul shots. First is good. Three oh one remaining in this third quarter. And RNS from the end of the first onwards. It's been an onslaught. As again we see substitution. Ben Dow coming in. Sutherland going two for two at the stripe. McLean on the ball. 2-3 zone and in the lane it's 1-4 and he's blocked by Dow. Oh, dangerous skip pass there. Shot on its way, no good. Oh, rebound and it is fifth field fighting for it. The arrow in favor of St. Laurent. And Datro, no choice in that situation but to hoist up a contested triple and come away empty handed all fortunate to get the possession arrow in their favor here. Dashro with it. Strong move along the baseline, kicks to the corner. Keo for three, no good. Rebound, Dow. Here comes Kellen Tynes. Tynes, pull up triple, buries it. Kellen Tynes. That a kid's a gamer. Party. He is a gamer. It's been fun to watch, and another steal. McLean, Malcolm, to the bucket, count it. All started again with Tynes there, hands in the cookie jar, gets it out in transition, three on one, easy buckets. And for, for a pair of guys that play as many minutes as they do, we have yet to see them get into foul trouble at any point this week. Yep. That is very impressive. Yep. They're playing sound defense, and you still see they're not just hanging around. They're making an impact defensively. That's right. It's not like they're you know not being aggressive. They're still you know they're they're still playing some risky defense at times as well in the reach ins. August didn't connect from deep, but it was Datro there to clean it up. Dowell deflected. Stolen by Nagape. How about that reach? Oh my. Fortunate to retain possession was St. Laurent. Nagape, nice finish. 
We talked about him being more aggressive, and that's a that's a perfect example of what you want to see right there. And St. Laurent putting on the press. Dowell's got to be prepared here to break it through the middle of the floor. He's got to catch strong. Somebody's got to flash towards the middle there, and fortunate Tynes gets into the lane, and offensive foul as Tynes lowers the boom on August. Kio going to inbound for St. Laurent. The substitution coming, and here we go. Shaheem Malcolm's going to get a little bit of a breather. Daniel Karipi checking in. Daniel Caripe from St. John, New Brunswick. Getting his first minutes of the game here. Skipping into the corner, down inside, Nagape. Good look on the cut, and it's Keo finishing. Tynes to fifth field. Fifth field to McLean. Down underneath, Dowell, and he's fouled. Surprised McLean didn't want to, thought he might have opted to hoist one there, and especially with the hot hand he's had. But a good pass from Lyon McLean, and now it is Ben Dowell at the free throw line. As silence drops to the gym, and you hear the tickling of the twine from Ben Dowell, first free throw is good. Second on its way, also pure. To one four. Over to Datro, no hesitation. Buries it. Oh. Ben Datro, and that's, you just want to see him be decisive. Right there, he says, okay, I'm going to take this into my own hands and put us back where we need to be. Offense, and there's a defensive rebound. Datro pushing in transition. Loses the handle. McLean. No good. And at the end of three quarters, it's RNS leading St. Laurent, 63-51. We'll take a quick break. Don't you go anywhere. A good fourth quarter coming up. Both teams looking to pick up their first win this week. St. Laurent and RNS. Kellen Tynes and I'm mic'd up for North Pole Oops. Bad Oops. Bad cooking the dough with the Oops. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to my dog. Woo. Woo. They're gonna play a lot of zone, so we need to beat it down the court. We can run all our sets against the zone. You just gotta run to good space. Done it. Ayo, bang into 30. Well, I got middle. Dawson drop. Man, see him, see him. Don't let it get through there. Dawson drop. Hey! Ben, turn and sprint. And one. Go, let's go. Gotta want it. That ball's in the air. Push somebody to box them up. Get the ball or squeeze it. We need to make sure that one time, Kelly, you did the absolute perfect thing you've never done since I met you. You stepped out. You tried to take up space. You weren't trying to take a charge, yeah. but you were trying to go and meet him. You accidentally went around right. it. Now you gotta close that gap a little bit better. Yeah. Panther. Panther. Hey! Not ben! Don't run into him. Sorry to interrupt Kelly Tynes. So you hear him mic'd up. Wired for sound back during our Ottawa session. The first of the NPA season. Here we are at the New Year Challenge. Game one on this Friday morning. First of five today and in front of your screen. It is Shaheem Malcolm back into the game as he inbounds to Kellen Tynes to get this fourth quarter in motion. Here is McLean to the bucket. Oh, good touch. And he converts. The floater in the lane. Such an important skill to have, especially for a guy of his stature. And he's able to go in there amongst the tall trees and kiss it softly off the glass. Definitely want to go, want to be able to go right over the hands of the defense. Keo, pull up, short, Malcolm. Malcolm across the timeline, hand off to Tynes. Tynes for three, banks it in. <laughs> you can see, says I'm not complaining. The bank open on a Friday morning in North York. 
I'm sure that's not the shot Damian Gay would like for Tynes to have, but if it goes in, why not? And on the other end, Datro aggressive to the rim, really trying to get points with the stop clock. Sutherland checking back in for RNS. Datro at the stripe, putting together a solid stat line himself today. But trailing by 16. They're gonna need a lot from him in this fourth if they're gonna make a push. Tynes. Malcolm and now McLean. Skip pass, good delivery. Tyne short on his jumper. Battling for the offensive board, but it's August who emerges with possession. Outlets, finds, one four. Kicks it back out. August for three. No good, it's short. Got off to a hot start. Has cooled off since then. And he's four of six from the three point line. Oh, sorry, Datro. that would make it four of seven on that last attempt. Fifth field, kicks, corner, no hesitation. Barry, connecting from deep, it's Lyon McLean. Been a stud in this one. Datro, oh, nice move underneath. RNS, you see, just trying to crack the code and break through this zone press. And Right now having no issues and finding their way, although a turnover there, August coming up with the steal. Datro in transition. Jump stop, gets it into the lane and a foul. Keo making a strong move into the middle of the lane. And if they could get these guys into foul trouble in the early bit of the quarter, that allows them for an early bonus as well in case this game comes down to the wire. An early timeout, Damian Gay wants to talk things over. Make sure his team is on the same page as they nurse a 16-point lead. We'll be back. Suds, wave him off. Box, you, you yeah, keep looking to pass. You got to look to attack. Quit catching the ball right in the middle. Be on you got to get side. on that side or this side. Come on. Let's go. Hey! And one! Let's go, big man. Come here, man. the paint when there's a man wide open. Find them. Make sure we're loud. We up by 10. We go on a run right now. They'll be done. Yeah, they won't exactly. want to play, man. Let's go. Transition's out there. Shot, run back. Transition's out there, bring it out, run the offense. Yeah. Soft force and down low. Bang out! Hey! Turn up, boy! Good job, Suds. There you go. Back inside Crestwood Preparatory College here in North York. RNS holding down the fort. 15 point lead over St. Laurent as we're a couple minutes into this fourth quarter. And coming up, we're gonna see another team from the East Coast, Halifax Prep, alias and Brandon Muntu. He's been, he's been a stud all week long for that seven squad in their inaugural season on the NPA circuit. I got to see him and get to know him throughout the summer during the NPH Showcase circuit. We traveled all across Canada, hit every major market in Canada, I trying to identify the top talent, and he was one of those guys. He was one of those guys I couldn't help, you know, as soon as, as soon as games were over, as soon as the weekend was over in Calgary, I started making calls to coaches. Next thing you know, I had some college interest. A Little bit after that, Halifax Prep contacts him, but needed a guy. He's been, an absolute stud in this league and has has been okay with carrying a heavy load. Well, Jaron Johnson a little banged up in their first couple of games. A little Got bit of a shoulder injury. In their win yesterday, had 24 points to uh, support the 34-point explosion from Brandon Muntu and a product of Calgary, Alberta, making the decision to go out to Halifax Prep. Pressure coming in, oh, 
Deflected. Datro fighting for it. Able to secure possession. Gets it to Keel. One extra pass. Going for it. Nice finish with the left hand. Baiting Shaheem Malcolm. A good shot fake and then a strong finish. That pump fake does wonders, man. If you just time it correctly, the basics just have, you know, they just make the game so easy. Oh, nice pass. One handed. McLean. Got it. Unconscious. Lion McLean. He's been dialed in from deep and gets the lead back to 16. Short on the jumper is Dwanfor, gets his own rebound. I'm gonna start calling him McLean because that, <laughs> that shot is going in clean. Basically nothing but nothing but net on those. Tynes with it. Screen set by Sutherland. Tynes delivering it down underneath. Dawson Sutherland unable to hang on. Dwan Ford. Oh, tough finish. And you know, some of some of the passes from Tynes, I don't think. I don't think it justifies just how good of a passer he is. Sometimes a lot of his teammates fumble fumble the, the passes and they're really good scoring opportunities. So in a lot of his highlights, you'll see, you know, plays get cut off because guys are fumbling it, but the actual targeting of the pass, the actual placement, puts guys in good positions to score. Certainly doesn't do him justice in his ability to facilitate his vision second to none as that shot attempt by fifth field was partially blocked. Actually, you know, two East Coasters that I, who I've really liked, and actually they're both from Nova Scotia, is Tynes and Jaron Johnson. Those guys are, oh man, McLean <laughs> has got it going today. White hot, Lion McLean. Wow, talk about a display of marksmanship. And Lion McLean has been deadly from beyond the arc. Tynes. Oh man, oh, so smooth. But this time, turns it over. Datro loses it. Keo fighting for it on the ground. Oh, and a good hustle play there from Andrew Keo. Earning St. Laurent an extra possession. A 17 point deficit for this Express squad. And they dropped a tough one yesterday to Halifax Prep. And you mentioned Jaron Johnson. When you look at him, he's another guy who can light it up from deep. Unorthodox shooting form, but don't let him get going because when he sees daylight, he's going to exploit you. McLean coming down with the defensive rebound. Oh, yeah. Lion McLean. No good. <laughs> he doesn't need anyone's permission to shoot that <laughs> shot. Keel fouled. His fifth field getting his hands into the cookie jar that time and a little tap on the wrist it looked like. Keo's gonna go to the line. I really like St. Laurent's game plan here to try to get back in this game. They're really trying to push everything in transition and have been able to get to the line for some easy points. First free throw is good. One thing I'd like to mention, these St. Laurent uniforms are undoubtedly the best in the NPA in my estimation. The blue, the yellow, the whites, so sharp, so clean. Kellen Tynes, travel. And the Express generate a turnover there. One four. Coming out for Keo. Datro has it for St. Laurent, looking to dump it down inside. We haven't seen much of Trayvon Minot. Don't see him on the, and there he is, uh, at the watering hole, if you will, and it's been Nagape who's been doing a fantastic job underneath, and they're trying to give him some more reps and get him some more meaningful minutes, and Datro! Second chance opportunities, and his motor is, is endless. It's, it's a relentless pursuit of the basketball. Ben Datro finishing. Shaheem Malcolm, Tides. McLean. Ooh, even bounces. that one looked good, man. <laughs> even his misses look good. <laughs> well, we talk about with shooters, there's no such thing as a bad miss. The only time I think you could consider something a bad miss is if it's left or right, but if it's down the, the middle, 
either long or short, and you're on target. Just now he looks pretty on target every time. Rotation's good. Form is good. Here he gets oh, here another he again. one. Oh, this time he's off. Yikes. You know, you won't see many of those out of him. No hesitation whatsoever. Playing with confidence. And good job by Malcolm to, to really put trust in his shooting. You know, continue to feed it to him. 1-4. Hand off to Keo. Keo behind the back. Gets it back to 1-4. 13-point game. Oh, good hands. Kellen Tynes. The instincts, the reaction. Sub coming, it's Richie McNeil coming out, or coming in, excuse me, for Fifthfield. Some good minutes from Jack Fifthfield for Coach Damien Gay. Oh, I think he might have got bailed out there by a foul call. Looked like he was slipping on already on the way. Going into a couple of defenders and barreling forward with his head down. But they're going to say it is a, along the end line. So on the floor. And checking in now for St. Laurent is Muka Sorin. Floater, no good. Malcolm with the board. I got to tell you what, this man, Shaheem Malcolm, he's got to be working on a double double, if not a triple double at this point, because between his ability to rebound the basketball, to score in a variety of different ways, and you combine that with his ability to pass, total package for sure. And an offensive foul. And so, St. Laurent gaining possession. And this is a critical one for them with 347 remaining. If they can get a bucket here, get themselves back in the thick of things to the corner. Attacking off the dribble. Basel hands off. Double team coming. Dasho, extra pass. One four. Shot is good. It's Andrew Keo. Shaheen Malcolm. McLean. Tynes. McNeil. Floater. No good. It's short. Battling underneath. McNeil. Tynes with it. Five. And they reset the shot clock. They did hit the rail, and they're going to. Now the officials are going to congregate and discuss. Malcolm with it. Oh, deflected off the hands of Sutherland. So now it's a 10 point RNS lead, and here comes a sub. Ben Dunnett, excuse me, Ben Dowell back in for RNS, and Dawson Sutherland a little frustrated. 1 4. Oh! With the finish! Hanging in the air for that one, tough one. Some hang time. You're seeing the defense really pick up for St. Laurent. They're getting super aggressive. And a timeout. 2.32 remaining. St. Laurent making a late surge. Will it be enough? 77-69. Single digits. Jack. The first and only NPA championship banner currently hangs in our nation's capital, the home of Canada Top Flight Academy. But it didn't come easy for Ottawa's only boys prep basketball program, who lost the first five games in the program's history before a team meeting put them on the path to making Canadian basketball history. It was a pretty rocky start for us, you know, coming into our first year as a, as a team and as a program. Uh, you know, we started off losing five games in a row, 
uh, it, was, it was tough, you know, everybody wasn't in the greatest mindset. That's the meeting that just changed everything. We were straight up with each other, we were all honest, and then we just started, we got better as a team, the chemistry got better, and then we started winning games, and we became confident. I ended up winning 13 in a row, and then it was just a great finish to have uh, come out on top as the first ever national champions. As a founder, as, a, as someone who just started this, you know, prep school, you have a vision, and to see it come to fruition sort of in the first year, it, it was uh, one of the biggest thrills in, in my life. Being an Ottawa guy, you know, so proud uh, at every level. The Ravens and the Ottawa UGGs, obviously the club system with Ottawa Elite, now you add ourselves in the, in the mix with the prep schools. We're seeing again uh, a lot of the hard work, uh, you know, pay off. Like any championship level team, CTA is now working even harder to stay at 232 remaining in this fourth quarter. Our first of five games today. Lion McLean having quite the game. You know, dangerous path and a time count violation. A turnover. St. Laurent makes what sense. A run. Shot clock was at 16 or leading down to 15 and it's a little bit of starts a starts with 24, so mental lapse there from RNS and coming out of the timeout, not realizing how much time is left on the shot clock. Good find, good swing. Datro got to keep it moving. They've had a lot of success here when the ball's Battle stayed in rotation. Eight. And it's Malcolm coming up with it. Malcolm a little too far out in front. Oh, great save. McNeil fighting for it underneath is yeah. Ben Dawson unable to control it. So Ben Dowell's ben been, uh, you know, been a presence nonetheless in the paint. Just got to work on the on his hands. One for handoff shot on its way from Dashro. It's no good and a good rebound from McLean. Oh, and a costly turnover there. Keo dumps it down underneath. It's one for it and the layup is good. We got ourselves a game here. Six point game with less than two minutes remaining. Oh, and a travel. Shaheen Malcolm turns it over. The Express, what a surge in this fourth quarter. And yes, they're gonna add the couple points there. The officials doing a great job of ensuring the score is correct, consulting with each other and the table. So Andrew Keogh, directly in front of your screen and right next to our broadcast position, he's gonna inbound. In the penalty, RNS is in the penalty, so any foul from here on out, and St. Laurent's gonna be at the stripe. Datro kicks, swinging it, attacking, balls on the floor, able to recover. It's Kellen Tynes. We're gonna be a jump ball. It's white ball. It's the arrow in favor of RNS. Great and St. Laurent has done, sorry to cut you, St. Laurent has done a good job in the fourth quarter here of attacking the rim and, and getting RNS in foul trouble. This is a good time for them to be in the bonus and they gotta really take advantage of it. And you just question a little bit why that might not have happened a little earlier. And even the, the level of defense that they're playing right now, the rotations are coming a lot quicker. This was not evident in the first half. Suarez commits the foul. And so Ben Dowell's gonna go to the, the line to shoot two. And we saw yesterday a similar situation unfold where RNS going up against a very talented Central Tech team. And Central Tech getting off to a bit of a slow start, but once they have started deploying that full court pressure, a little bit of that three quarter zone press, and now you're forcing RNS to think a little bit and you can't just let them dribble the ball up the floor and right. put it in the hands of either Kellen Tynes or Shaheen Malcolm. That's where things become problematic for this team, and you're seeing it unfold right now. Oh, and the layup just rims out. They're gonna get another possession, another crack at it. Still a six point game with 106 to go. Seven point game as Dowell was able to oh, convert apologize. one free throw on that trip. Travel, good call by the official, just dragged that pivot foot, tried to make the extra pass, and. Realized, okay, I'm going into Ben Dow. Might not be the best decision to go up. So here's Tynes with it, and you see Datro retreating now to half. And that's what they need to do. And now the trap coming, nearly turning it over. McNeil, short, Tynes, 
Oh, beautiful body control, Kellentines. And a big bucket, extending the lead to nine with less than a minute to play. It's one four. And one! No offensive. And they count the bucket. Yes, count the bucket. That's a tough finish for that oh, boy. Oh, man. First looking at the official, looked like it might have been going the other way. And, and of course, gave the universal motion. Count it plus the foul. Free throw, short. So and the Express have left a lot of buckets here from the free throw line. A lot of points. And you just think about what, what if. What that could, could have been the difference in the game. 100%. We talk about the importance of free throw shooting a lot, not just at this level, but all the way through into the pro ranks. I mean, free throw shooting pivotal. Oh, and deflected there, now pressure coming. McLean, turnover. Three Attacking. on one here. Layup, good! It's Basel, and a quick outlet feed. Here's McLean, down underneath, dangerous pass, but Dow finishes. Datro, crossover and a turnover. Great hands by Tynes, getting just, he knows how to pick at it. He knows when to reach and how to angle the defender. What a steal. And that steal might seal the deal if Kellentines can convert at the charity stripe. A reminder, we have four more games coming up here today at Crestwood Preparatory College as Tynes converts and Halifax Prep preparing to take to the floor here. Fresh off a win yesterday. Looking to pick up maybe their second win of the season. And as time ticks away. Elias, it's been a good one. Ben Datro, no good. And RNS prevails. 83-75. Shaheem Malcolm, Kellen Tynes getting the job done. And RNS on the board with their first win of the week. A reminder not to turn away from your screen. We have Halifax Prep taking on Beast coming up in a few minutes from now. In the meantime, when we come back, you can look forward to that. We'll take a short break. Again, RNS picking up the win over St. Laurent. 